You hear that? We are in cicada season right now. So here's the what I'm planning on doing today. My uh, rear window had a nasty encounter with a piece of firewood and it blew it out. And unfortunately with these rangers, you can't just replace individual panes. I know there are a couple solutions out there now where they are, uh, you know, offering panes, like replacement panes, but it's not the same as OEM. And just the single replacement pane costs about a hundred bucks. And I was able to go to the junkyard and get one of the whole unit for 30 bucks. So I guess if you're willing to do a little bit of the the leg work and go out and disassemble it yourself, um, you can save a lot of money. And you know, the big benefit of going to the scrapyard and getting your own parts is that the trucks in the scrapyard, you actually can kind of make your mistakes and learn how those trucks come apart in order to get to the parts that you want. And then you don't have to learn that on the vehicle that you're actually repairing. For example, in the truck that I took this out of, I only removed a few of the interior panels to get to the rear window, but in order to do that I still had to fold down the uh, headliner, and so this time around I'm going to make sure I remove everything that's holding the headliner in, and I'm probably going to remove the whole headliner, um, that way I don't damage it in the process of getting out the old window. Uh, when I looked for information on how to get this particular style of um, rear window out of a Ranger, there really isn't a lot of information out there. And so this is my contribution to that conversation. So I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so when I last, when I took the, the last one out of the junk car, the junk truck, all I did was remove these panels here and a couple of screws from up here and then I, sorry, from up here and I folded down the headliner but then when the headliner flipped back up it left a crease in it so I think I'm going to have to pull the whole headliner which requires me to get some of these brackets here or well they're they're plastic trim pieces that run the whole uh, perimeter of the ceiling and then I'll have to pull the light cover and I'll have to pull the sun visors so it's a little bit more work but I don't want to do any damage here on this guy I guess I'll probably start with getting this beautiful tape job pulled down this was my daughter's solution to the problem, and she didn't do too bad of a job. So the first tool I'm gonna need is down here. We need some of these trim tools. And then we gotta pop these little trim plugs off and They're just, they're not hard. I'm just always afraid I'm gonna break something. They've just got these barbs on them. There we go. Oops. So these barbs, you know, allow it to go in and then makes it hard to come pull back out. So I'm, I don't think I'm gonna fully take off this panel or this panel. I'm just gonna peel them back because I, um, I don't want to have to take out the seats and everything else. <laughs> all right, so anyway, there's no reason for you to watch me do all of these. I'm gonna take out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them, and then they the tenth one over here is actually a laundry hook or a hang, clothes hanger hook or whatever you call it. And um, 
that's a screw. So I ended up having to take off uh, two more on each side. Oh, not that one. Down here, two more on each side. So that was a four extra of these little clips. And now what I'm going to do is on this upper molding, they just clip in all of these upper moldings. And then over here with the grab handle, I'm gonna have to pop off the uh, attachment plugs here and unscrew the grab handle and then I'll be able to pull this molding off. And so basically I'm gonna take off this one, this one, or that's the same one, this one, this one actually just comes out like that. And uh, I'm gonna loosen this guy and just slide it out of the way like this. And then I'm going to take, like I said before, the dome light off and the, the uh, sun visors and I'll be able to drop this, this headliner. Look at that tiny hicks, something or other in there. I'm gonna have to find what fits in there. It's gonna be like a eight millimeter or something. Well, I used a six millimeter to get it off, but it's actually a five and a half millimeter. So luckily I have that in this nut driver tool. These aren't in very good. They're kind of loose. So kind of glad I'm doing this. This truck needs a serious clean. Everything's filthy. All right, so this trim here should just pop off. There's just clips holding everything in. I don't think this model had the side curtain airbags yet. I think there's airbags in the seats. Let's see, there we go. See how dirty this is? This is lots of off-roading, none of which I was able to do. This is all previous owner having fun in this truck, and not me. He was a farmer, and uh, I think he just used this to get from place to place on his property and drove right through the fields. And, so that's why we got all this heavy layer of fine dust. It was really hard when I first bought this, it was really hard to clean it all out. And you can see it, it's accumulated in places that I haven't been able to reach. Got another one of these clips in here and looks like three screws holding in the visor and then whatever is holding in the clip. Um, hopefully the clip is just attached to the headliner. I'll find that out in just a minute. Okay. There's that. I've never seen these parts off the vehicle before. Okay, if you look, there is a tiny little screw back there on the sun visor hook that's holding the front of the headliner to the cab. So I gotta pull that out. I'm not gonna show that. And then same thing goes for this guy. I think I'll have to figure out how that guy is attached. But as you can see, we're getting there. Interestingly enough, the headliner that I worked on on the 2002 in the junkyard was a base model Ranger and um, it was the headliner was nice nice and flimsy it just had a single layer of whatever this uh, fiberglass type stuff is but you can see on mine it's got this uh, polyurethane foam rigid foam all throughout so I wouldn't even be able to bend this down even if I wanted to it gives it a lot of structure and it probably um, dampens the noise from outside 
So I'm going to continue what I'm doing. I'm gonna take out the dome light. I'm gonna get those hooks off and then uh, I'll bring you back when it's time to take out the headliner. Well, I'm convinced that the dome light is designed to break when you take it off. I think the clear uh, plastic is supposed to separate from the metalized you know, reflector, but even now that it's broken down, I can't get it separated. So um, I have ways, I'll, I'll make sure it's up there securely, but uh, it's a little disappointing. I still have uh, three screws to take out to drop this, and then hopefully this headliner will be free by then. Now, I wish I could have shown you that, but as I peeled away the uh, headliner, it was stuck in a couple places, but only on the passenger side. So I don't know if that's just an adhesive bleed through or if it was intended to be stuck like that. So I've got it down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just pull it out so it's out of my way and so I don't accidentally damage it. And then finally we can get to uh, the whole purpose of this video is about which is taking out this rear window. Look at that, we have the tiniest bit of mouse activity. That's interesting. I guess I'm lucky that this being a farm truck, that there wasn't like a whole ton of mouse activity up in here. And I'm kinda glad I'm not pulling out mouse nests at this point. right here out of the way and here she is so the main reason I had to get rid of these lower um, rivets panel rivets whatever you call them not necessarily to pull out this unit but it was to get it back in because um, it's got these tabs And these tabs have to get over these, this lip here, and I wouldn't be able to do that if it was still stuck in place. It just wouldn't go in. It has to go up and in to those holes. So there's actually still, it's still attached somewhere around the bottom. I'll have to figure that out. But, but uh, I am good to take out the window now, so that's what I'm going to do now. These, uh, nuts there's eight of them around the perimeter of the whole window they're nine millimeters so i'm going to get my ratchet and a nine millimeter socket and i'm going to go around and take care of all those and then um, once i get those nuts off i'll come back and show you how you want to push this window out without breaking it okay now that i have all the nuts off um, what i want to do i'm going to start on this end because this is where the glass is still intact I'm going to gently push on the corners because those are the strongest parts of these windows. If you try pushing in the middle, you, the, you run a good chance of breaking it or bending it and making it harder to get out. But if you just push here on the middle, or I'm sorry, <laughs> not on the middle, on the corner, you'll hear the, uh, the adhesive start to give away. Right, and you see now I've got a nice gap so I'm gonna I'll keep you guys on I don't know how much you're gonna see with this harness but I'm gonna push the window out the rest of the way here it helps that the window has been sitting in the Sun for a little bit of time so the adhesive is nice and soft I'm gonna run over to the other side Now that I've got it started, it'll be a lot easier to push out on this end. Oh, you know what? Before I can, I still have all that tape to pull off. Yeah. So now, this should just come right out. It helps to have a second person to catch it when it comes down like that. But I'm not trying to save it.
This is just a butyl rubber adhesive strip that they used to install these windows. I'm actually replacing it with the exact same product because it works so well. That way you don't have to deal with caulk guns and slimy adhesive or anything. But I will have to clean the flange before I put in the new window. Okay, my junkyard window didn't come with one of these latches, so I have to try to take the latch off the old uh, window and insert it on the new one. I'm assuming it can only be disassembled from the inside because it wouldn't be it wouldn't make sense to be able to disassemble it from the outside. So I'm going to try to push out this pin that holds this latch in. I don't know how successful I'm going to be because I don't have the right tools for the job. Well, it is coming out. It's slow. There goes the pin. Now there's going to be a spring that's going to want to jump out at me, I think, so i got to be careful here. Oh, it's just a... Alright, good. It's not riveted. There are two screws. Yay. And it's just a uh, piece of spring steel. I gotta remember how that goes. Good. Something nice and simple for a change. It's probably got some sealant on it to keep water from coming in. So I've got a, somewhere, I've got a razor blade that'll help me break that seal. Oh, never mind. All it took was a little a little pressure. All right, time to put it on the new one. All right, I'm just using a piece of whatever tape I had handy. I'm going to tape that piece into position until I can get the, the screws onto it. goes like this. Alright, that's all she took there. So now I get to put my leaf spring back in. Help it find the groove here. Like that. This is just a roll pin. I wish I had a, a set of roll pin punches. It'd be nice to have right about now. But easy enough. It does the job. There we go. All right, now I gotta clean up that big nasty opening. All right, one of the best ways I have found to remove this butyl rubber um, adhesive off of your vehicle um, is to use, it actually sticks to itself so well that you can use butyl rubber to remove the butyl rubber. So this is just part of the gasket off of the old window. And I'm going to just press it in and pull, and it just takes all that rubber with it as I do that. It's especially easy on painted surfaces. It's a little bit harder on the flange of the window. It was harder because it was fiberglass, and it had just a little bit of a flat texture to it, and so the butyl wanted to stick to that really well too. But this is still what I've found is the quickest way and you don't have to use chemicals or any solvents or anything. Um, and then when you're done you just throw it in the trash.
just like that, it took the whole gasket off. I am gonna go around this whole surface now and clean it really well so I'll get a good bond with the new gasket. And I'm also going to clean off this adhesive residue from the duct tape on the paint. I won't film that. I'll be back when I'm done with that. So this is what I'm using to get the remainder of the butyl. This stuff dissolves it um, pretty quick. So it does a great job. There we go. As you can see, it just pulls it right up. So you can buy the, you know, whatever, goof off or whatever the expensive stuff is. People say to use acetone, but this stuff just dissolves it instantly. So that's what I use. So this is the product I'll be using today to install this window. It is a 3M window weld ribbon sealer. Um, it comes with uh, setting blocks. I won't be using those because this is a bolt-in window. Setting blocks, I believe, are used for windows that are just glued in and uh, they need to be spaced off of the surface of the pinch weld um, by a certain amount. This is easier because I'm just going to apply this to the pinch weld and then install my window and clamp everything down with the screws and then there's standoffs on the window frame that will maintain the correct difference be the correct distance between the frame of the window and the pinch weld. So what you want to do is you want to start at the center on the bottom. That's where you want your gap to be is on the bottom. So any water that may still get in will drain out. And then we go around the perimeter here. Once I have it applied, I'll pull this tape off. As you can see, they give you plenty to get the job done. I'm going to cut it right there. And um, and then I'll, peel the, I'll, I'll finish, you know, kind of pressing it into place and then we'll uh, peel the tape off and get ready to install the window. my window I guess I'm just gonna take it grab it here and press it into place and the fresh adhesive should grab it just gonna make sure I line my screws up with the holes Just coming around on this end and making sure that everything is lined up properly. And it is. So now I get to thread on these nuts by hand. Once I get these all on, I'll, I'll, I'll come back. Okay, now that I got all the screws in finger tight, I'm gonna start in the middle and gently tighten this down. I'm not going to um, give it, I'm not gonna go all the way yet with this. Um, I just wanna gently snug it down and I need to give the adhesive time to squeeze out, find its level and um, then I'll come back. I'll probably take a little break here and then I'll come back in about a half hour after the sun has beat down on it really good. And I will snug it again and uh, then I'll call it good. I'm looking, I'm gonna be judging by the gap between the, uh, the window frame and the truck on the outside. And once that window frame is touching 
the truck, it'll be good. I don't have to snug it down anymore. The purpose of that window frame isn't to keep the water out. That's what the adhesive is for. But it just looks nice when there's no gap between the frame and the, and the body of the truck. So now that I've snugged everything down, let's take a look. As you can see, along the top, it's pretty good. You can see there's a little bit of a gap right here. But down on the far end, there is no gap. Maybe a small gap right here. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna let that settle for about 30 minutes. I'll come back and snug it again, and then uh, we'll see where we're at there. All right, now with the window snugged down to my liking, I get to reinstall the interior in the reverse order that I took it all out. So first is gonna be the headliner. I need to drop the seat back down again. Well, that's the last of the work that I am doing on this truck before I sell it, so uh, I think I'm leaving it in a pretty good condition, definitely much better condition than when I bought it. Uh, the interior stuff really wasn't that hard. I think the hardest part was getting those little push-in panel clips, the rivet style ones, getting them out without breaking them. Uh, I did break one, and uh, there's it was at the bottom behind behind the jumper seat and it was really hard to get to and I'm just gonna leave it um, so the uh, new glass is in it looks really good unfortunately the frame of this glass is in a little bit worse shape than the one that I replaced as you can see it's maybe you can see that it's kind of all beat up and the truck that I got it out of is obviously a work truck and it had uh, it had taken some serious abuse. If we look at this guy here, you know, this guy, even though it's faded, it's pretty clean all the way around. But, you know, beat up frame and good glass is probably better than broken glass and nice frame. So, I'm going to take that as a win. I want to thank everybody for watching, and uh, I thank you for sticking around. I know that sometimes these videos are long. Um, and I, I'm grateful for all of the uh, comments and the likes and everything that everybody gives. Any advice is always welcome. And uh, if you like this type of stuff, I have a, a series that I'm doing on this guy right here. Uh, I'm rebuilding 
1968 VW Beetle. So I'll link the uh, playlist at the end of this video to the VW Beetle uh, series. Um, so don't forget to subscribe and all that fun stuff. Well, thanks you guys again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.